This is a thermostatic radiator trap, and we find them installed in two pipe steam heating systems. But why do we need them and how do they work? That's what we'll be covering in this video, which is sponsored by State Supply. Check out statesupply.com to see the many different types of steam traps available. You can shop for parts and accessories, or speak to a knowledgeable steam system specialist about your specific needs. Just click the link in the video description down below to learn more. The thermostatic radiator trap looks something like this, although there are many variations. These valves are connected to the low side of a steam operated radiator. This is a mechanical valve which allows air and water to pass through, but automatically acts to prevent steam passing through. We will see how it does that a little later in this video. Steam heating systems can be found in residential, commercial, and even industrial sites. They're very common in large campuses, especially larger, older buildings. These systems do not require pumps. Instead, they use the steam itself to distribute the heat around the building, although we might find a condensate pump on the return line. So, why do we need a thermostatic radiator trap on our radiators? To answer that, we'll first need to understand how the steam system works. If we add thermal energy, or heat, to some water at standard atmospheric pressure, its temperature rises until it reaches 100 degrees Celsius, or 212 degrees Fahrenheit. At this point, it begins to boil and evaporate into steam. The thermal energy is carried away by the steam. If we capture and contain the steam, by placing a loosely fitting lid over the vessel, we would see the lid rise up. If we fix the lid firmly to the vessel, we would see the internal pressure increase. That's because the water molecules are expanding and taking up more space. In cool water, the molecules are tightly packed together. But as more thermal energy is added, the water molecules become excited and they vibrate rapidly, which increases their volume. It increases so much that one unit of water can expand into steam approximately 1,600 times its original volume. If the volume of the vessel is fixed, and more thermal energy is added, the water molecules are going to become excited and move faster. They will collide with the walls of the vessel more frequently and with more force. This increases the pressure inside the vessel. The pressure pushes the steam. It naturally tries to reach a location of lower pressure. We can use that pushing force to distribute the thermal energy through pipes to radiators and then back to the boiler. In a typical two-pipe steam heating system, the boiler is adding thermal energy and heating the water which turns it into steam. The pressure is pushing the steam along the pipe and to the radiator. The radiator heats the ambient air of the room, so the thermal energy is transferred from the steam through the radiator wall and into the air of the room. As the air is heated, it rises up and cooler air then rushes in to take its place. This will repeat continuously. The steam is giving away its thermal energy. As it does so, it condenses back into a liquid. The high pressure of the system is going to push this water back to the boiler, where it will be reheated and repeat the cycle. We only want condensate liquid returning to the boiler. We don't want any steam getting into the return line. This would be a waste of energy, as it will warm the condensate liquid and also lose heat on the way back. We've paid to create the steam, so we don't want to waste it. Mixing the steam and the condensate will cause many problems for the system also, such as steam binding and also steam hammer. This can be catastrophic for the system, so we must try to avoid this. One way to do that is through a thermostatic radiator trap. There are a few different designs for thermostatic steam traps, but we're going to focus on the bellow type in this video. When we look at the valve, we have the main body with an inlet and an outlet. On the top is a hexagonal bolt head, which allows us to dismantle the unit for maintenance and repairs. We'll discuss that a little later in this video. When we look inside, we find a set of bellows. 
This will push a plug into the seat of the valve, which is just before the outlet. The bellows are secured to the top of the trap. The bellow is a sealed unit that contains a liquid which vaporizes at or close to the boiling point of water. The liquid inside the bellow is typically water or a water and alcohol mixture. We use this because, as we now know, water expands rapidly as it is heated. So we can use this to control the valve automatically. The bellow is made from a metal body with metal pleats or corrugations. These can extend or contract as the internal pressure from the expanding liquid increases or decreases. Steam exists above 100 degrees Celsius or 212 degrees Fahrenheit. This is above the boiling point of water. So when the steam comes into contact with the bellow, the water inside the bellow is going to be heated by this and it will flash into steam almost instantly. This will cause a rapid increase in volume. This causes the bellows to extend, and we can use that to block the outlet of the valve. On system startup, the bellow is open and the trap is full of condensate. As steam enters the trap, it heats the bellow. The water in the bellow is heated, which causes it to flash into steam. The pressure inside the bellow increases. As the bellow is secured at the top to the trap body, it can only extend downwards, and so it plugs the outlet and stops any steam from flowing into the condensate line. This gives the steam in the radiator a chance to give away its heat to the room. The steam will then cool down until it condenses into a liquid. The liquid condensate fills the trap body and draws the heat out of the bellow. This allows the pressure inside the bellow to reduce and the bellow shrinks to its original length and position. As it does so, it opens the valve. The steam then pushes the condensate out and the trap closes and repeats the cycle. During operation, the bellows are constantly expanding and contracting. And like all mechanical things, they will eventually fail. In a typical building with, say, 1,000 hours of heating per season, the trap might open and close about three times per minute. And so, in a single heating season, the trap may be opening and closing about 180,000 times a year. After five or six years, the trap may have opened and closed more than one million times. That is a lot of wear and tear on a thin mechanical bellow. Simple metal fatigue will destroy the trap after a few years. It's like bending a piece of metal backwards and forwards on the same axis. It will eventually break. Additionally, the corrosive nature of the condensate will cause the bellows to weaken. Typically, a steam trap only has a useful life of around three to five years. Thermostatic radiator traps do not slowly stop working. When they fail, it is instant and without warning. There is no slow deterioration in operation, so the bellows should be replaced as part of routine maintenance according to the manufacturer's recommendations. When the bellow breaks, the water inside the bellow will escape, and so the bellow can no longer respond to changes in temperature. When bellows fail, the trap can either fail open or closed, depending on the type of construction. With the open failure, when the bellow ruptures, it allows steam to pass through. This occurs because the bellow's default length isn't enough to close the valve. The bellow is filled with water and alcohol. This expands and forces the bellow to expand past its default position. So, when the bellow ruptures, it returns to its default length and the valve is left open. This will allow steam to flow through, which wastes energy and causes problems in the system. This can be very hard to detect because the steam is still flowing through, so the radiator will still be hot. The other type of failure is the closed failure. When the bellow ruptures, the bellow drops and blocks the valve, effectively closing it. When the valve is constructed, the bellow hangs freely and blocks the outlet. Water is placed inside and a vacuum is formed to draw out the air inside. This causes the bellow to rise up and compress. When the steam enters, the bellow expands and blocks the outlet. 
If the bellow ruptures, it will drop and block the outlet. The radiator will eventually stop giving out heat, so you can tell the valve has failed. Ok, that's it for this video, but to continue learning about heating systems and engineering, check out one of the videos on screen now and I'll catch you there for the next lesson. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn and of course theengineeringmindset.com.